periodicity is one of the more important dynamical features that we are going to consider. But before we dig in, let's get some definitions right. Now, you've heard me talk about orbits in the past, maybe incidentally. Let's be a little bit more careful. An orbit of a dynamical system is simply a solution, a full solution over time. So in continuous time, this means a solution of the form x of t for all values of t. Maybe all values of t, positive and negative reals, or maybe just positive reals if you're looking at a forward orbit. In discrete time, same thing. You have a solution of the form x of n for all values of n. That is an orbit of the dynamical system. Now, what are periodic orbits? Periodic orbits are simply orbits that repeat over time. So a periodic orbit is a solution, or an orbit, x, such that after time p, for some positive number p, x comes back to where it started. So what does that mean? In continuous time, this means that x of t plus p equals x of t for all values of t and some fixed minimal positive number p. In discrete time, this means that x of n plus p equals x of n for all values of n and some fixed positive minimal number p. Now, why do I keep saying positive minimal number? Well, let's say that you've got a periodic orbit of period 3, so that after three time steps, you're back to where you started. Well, it's also getting back to where it started after six or nine or negative three time steps. So in order to have an unambiguous notion of period, P, we're going to take the minimal such positive number P for which these statements hold. Okay, well, uh, how about some examples? It's not too hard to find some examples of maybe simple periodic orbits in discrete time dynamical systems. So let's consider the following systems. First of all, let's look at ex equals minus x cubed. Then this has a very obvious periodic orbit of period two, where the orbit alternates between plus and minus one. So plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. And you can see by plugging in plus one into the right-hand side and getting minus one, then plugging in minus one into the right-hand side, getting plus one, that this is indeed a periodic orbit of period two. A slightly more complex example arises if we look at a logistic equation, something of the form ex equals seven halves x times quantity one minus x. Now, there's again a periodic orbit of period two. It's going to take a little bit more work for you to verify that the orbit x that alternates between three-sevenths and six-sevenths is in this case periodic. That is, I plug in three-sevenths, I get six-sevenths. I plug in six-sevenths, I get three-sevenths. All right, well, these are both period two orbits. What about a different period? What about something of period three? Well, this is going to require a bit more effort. Let's again take a simple logistic equation, something where the right-hand side is an inverted parabola. But I'm going to have to tune it a bit more. I'm going to look at the system EX equals 3.831874 times X times quantity 1 minus X. In this case, if I plug in X equals 1 half, then what I get next is 0.957969. If I plug that into the right-hand side, I get 0 0.154290, keeps going for a while. And if I, if I keep going with those decimals and then plug that number back in, I'll get one half. I'll get one half, I'll get a periodic orbit of period three, and it's gonna work out exactly. Now, are you going to trust me on that? Are you going to try it out? Maybe the thing to do is to draw some pictures and see what this looks like. If we plot the diagram for this last system where we have a quadratic right-hand side of the form 3.8318 blah, 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 times x times 1 minus x, and we pick an initial condition 
that is right at 0 0.5 or right at one half and then let it go, it certainly seems as though what we're getting is something that repeats after three steps. So I go up and then to the right and then down and over to the left and boom, boom, boom. Okay, well, that's, that's interesting. I wonder what happens if we change the initial condition a little bit. Ooh, it seems as though this is a stable phenomenon in that you, you bounce around a little bit, but then eventually, as you add more and more points, you seem to be converging to this periodic orbit of period three. It looks a little bit like a, a staircase in there. If we change the initial condition too much, things can get a little weird. Let's calm it down a bit and let's change that right hand side from 3.8318 blah 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 down to 3.5. That setting where we saw a periodic orbit of period 2. And now if we set the input, if we set x0 to be either 3 sevenths or 6 sevenths, then indeed we do get a periodic orbit that just, it makes a little square in the diagram. It just bounces boing 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 boing. But, but, if we change that initial condition so that we're not right on that periodic orbit, then we're moving away from it. It seems as though this is an unstable periodic orbit of period two, and that there is something stable that we converge to, something that looks periodic, but if you count carefully, is a periodic orbit of period four. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder where this story is going to lead. Eventually, periodic orbits are an important part of our story, and there are some fascinating examples in discrete time. Now, why have we not talked about any examples in continuous time? Well, that is what we're going to think about next.